Hi everybody, I recently made a video about reptilians and at the end of that video I asked you if you would be kind enough, I read a little list of um, different topics that I'd received from the Great White Brotherhood and I asked you all if you would be kind enough to tell me what you wanted me to talk about and many 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 of you wrote in and gave your suggestions and I thank you very much for doing so and I'll get round to doing all of them when I, as and when I get the time but today I'm going to talk to you about the pyramids which was one of the most popular topics uh, so we're going to talk primarily really about the pyramids of Giza but we're going to mention all the other pyramids everywhere okay so let's get going pyramids uh, uh, no, what, sorry, what I'm going to do, as I've done before, I'm going to read what the Great White Brotherhood gave us and I'm going to stop from time to time and try and explain anything that might be a bit sort of confusing that you may not understand. Pyramids. Information con concerning the construction of the various pyramids throughout the world is available to those willing to search. The methods of mining, transportation using levitation technology and the actual construction is no longer the mystery that it once was. Now what they're talking about there is that recently a group of very well trained remote viewers have remote viewed the Great Pyramids and have put videos on YouTube that you can watch and they have accurately described how things were done and so the, the Brotherhood are suggesting that if you haven't yet seen those videos made by the remote viewers that you do so because apparently they've got it right okay so they're not going to describe they're not going to repeat what other people have already said we go on However, what remains outside of general knowledge are three questions. One, when were they built? Two, by whom were they built? And three, why were they built? To consider the first question, when were they built? Let us say that many pyramids were built over a long period of time, some fairly recently, but what is of interest is what is called the Great Pyramids of Giza and similar pyramids in the Americas that um, date back to the Incas and so on. These original and wonderful constructions date back many thousands of years. One cannot put a precise date on any pyramids as they were constructed around the world over a number of years by a builder race of beings that went from country to country to decide on the actual locations and to organise the architecture and the workings and the workers. <laughs> the latest, which means the newest of these pyramids that we are considering, were constructed some 12 thousand years ago and the earlier ones date back at least 20,000 years perhaps longer. Those that are called the Great Pyramids were the first and so we can say that they were constructed about 20,000 years ago. They're talking about the Great uh, Pyramids of Giza and the very first ones that were built um, in South America and so on. By whom were they built? The answer to this question depends on which branch of construction one considers. There were the designers, which are this uh, builder race, I suppose, the workers and many other beings and priests, etc., that were involved in the total projects. Let us first consider the beings that decided that these pyramids were necessary. This is what you refer to as an alien race. Uh, 
It was customary by those who consider themselves versed in information concerning aliens to associate them with a star cluster, Orion, the Pleiades, etc. In fact, true aliens are non-corporeal, which means they don't have physical bodies like we do, and, as they live in the astral realms, are not associated with anything terrestrial any more than the concept of heaven can be associated with a particular star system. What they're saying there is that if you live in the astral realms, you don't actually live in or near any particular star system or planet, you just live in the astral realms. But we won't argue about that. Alien beings have been curious about Earth, the only planet with life in physical form on its surface, for vast amounts of time. One must always remember that all non-physical life is immortal, and so periods of time such as a million years are meaningless to immortal beings. Okay, so if you live in the astral realms, you just live forever and you soldier on forever. A group of aliens decided that pyramids were necessary throughout the galaxy and undertook to construct them on various planets and moons throughout the galaxy, including planet Earth. The reason will be discussed later, but this group of aliens it were what we refer to as the Builder race. Being non-corporeal, living in the astral realms, they could not assume physical form, but they could communicate with the priest groups across the world by telepathy, as it was usual for priests to be versed in the art of telepathy at that time, which was pre-Christianity and pre-Islam. Priests at that time worked closely with the rulers of the countries concerned and were told some story by the aliens as to why the pyramids would be advantageous to the rulers to help them with afterlife or a similar story, and so it was agreed by the rulers that the pyramids could and would be constructed throughout the planet Earth. So what they did, these this alien group, who wanted to build pyramids on Earth, got in touch with the priests around the world of various religions and um, told them a cock and bull story that it would be advantageous to the rulers, to the king or emperors or whatever they were, that um, if they had these pyramids and they could be buried in them, they would gain access to the afterlife more easily and all that sort of thing. But it it was just a story and was not true at all. Um, right, so, so by telepathy, priests were instructed to uh, assemble workers, tool makers, builders of, builders of housing for the workers, food, cooks, and all that would be required to allow vast construction projects to take place. Once all that was in order, the priests were given details of the sites and some details of the construction techniques that would be used. Quick drink of water, please. It's hot in the south of France where I live now. And uh, uh, we need water to keep going. Now... Robots of various types were invented by this builder race, specifically designed to work in the environments that they would encounter. These would be similar to what you may know as greys, mantis, etc., but we stress all were robots specifically designed for the tasks they were to perform. Now, if you go and watch these videos by people that remote viewed the building of the Great Pyramids, they you will see that there were these little robots that were um that they, they resembled humans vaguely. They looked a bit like the little greys and they were specifically designed to work in terrible conditions underground 
um, hacking out huge blocks of stone from which the, the pyramids were built. The techniques used to mine and transport the blocks of stone have been correctly perceived by remote viewers, and so we do not consider it necessary to repeat that information here. <laughs> Even though I just mentioned it a bit. Suffice to say that specifically designed life forms were used to mine the blocks of stone. Then human builders, that's people like you and I, using alien design technology, cut the blocks to the precise shapes that the builder race specified, and then other humans using levitation technology, also provided by the aliens, were used to oversee the transport and placement of the blocks of stone that resulted in the wondrous pyramidal forms that we see today. So what the humans did, they were taught a technology that allowed these monstrous blocks of stones to lift up off the floor and were weightless. And so the humans sort of pushed them around and got them to Giza and managed to build the pyramids under the control of these this builder race that were working through the priests telepathically to get the whole thing done. Why were they built? As we previously stated, these pyramid-shaped constructions were placed on strategic planets and moons throughout the galaxy, not only planet Earth, but all over the galaxy they, they built these, these pyramids. Man has recently discovered some on the moon and on Mars. As man explores space more, he will discover them on many other celestial bodies. Celestial body just means a planet or a star or whatever, something out in space. Uh, the reason for their construction was quite simply to act as guiding beacons throughout the galaxy to enable flying craft, UFOs, piloted by robots, to guide them to any chosen destination. Thus, they can be considered to be interspatial road signs. Now, we have a similar system today. I can never remember the name of it, but we have satellites in space and we can beam signal down signals down to people that have got a... The French call it a GPS system, I can't remember the English name for it, but it's a, a system where you type in your destination and it shows you the route to get from where you are to where you want to, to be. And these pyramids did exactly the same, uh, sometimes to help people get round the world in flying saucers and sometimes to get from far off places across space to planet Earth or wherever, OK? Now, why were they built? Oh, I think they're going to talk about it here. As we previously stated, these pyramid-shaped constructions were placed on strategic, strategic, strategic planets and moons throughout the galaxy. Man, oh, I've already said that. As we have previously exp explained, all is frequency, so to travel from one place to another it is necessary to know the frequency of the desired location and these pyramids constantly broadcasted their locations thus allowing the, be the beings piloting a UFO easily to jump from one location to another. I, I made a video about this where I said that um, uh, these space people, if, they, if they're somewhere in the galaxy and they know the frequency of where they are and if, if they can get hold of the frequency, say, of Giza, they just type that into their guidance system and chomp, off they go and they just jump from where they are to where they want to be in Giza. OK, and from there they redirect themselves anywhere around planet Earth or whatever, wherever they want to go. As we have previously explained, 
all its frequency, so to travel from one place to another, it is necessary to know the frequency of the de desired location, and these pyramids constantly broadcasted the, their location, thus allowing... No, I just read all that. I'm sorry. I'm getting a bit confused. Anyway, please excuse me. We should perhaps mention the famous sarcophagus located in the so-called King's Chamber of the Great Pyramid of Cheops. This was placed... It's a great big stone box, hollow box, that looks like a, a sort of a burial thing, OK? This was placed there to placate the king of that period and fool him that the pyramids were indeed constructed as a burial chamber for that king. In fact, they had nothing to do with burying the king. It was... They were there as... Um, uh, as frequency location points. We will also mention why there are three pyramids of ancient construction on that site. The largest, the Great Pyramid, broadcasted a homing signal out into space, whereas the two smaller ones just linked with our other pyramids throughout planet Earth and allowed craft to fly between any sites on Earth. Some of these pyramids are still active, while others are no longer in operation. The, one in Giza, the ones in Giza are non-functioning as they were damaged by Earth ships, shifts, oh dear, but, but there are others throughout the world that are still broadcasting their location. I believe there's one at the North Pole that's still active. This is a brief overview of the pyramids located on Earth. We could talk at great length about the power sources used to create the homing signals and many more fascinating facts concerning the pyramids, but we have given an introduction to assist mankind in his understanding of the various races of beings that interact with humanity incarnate and have done so for many, many millennia. OK, and, and that's the end of what they said. So I, I, don't, I don't know if you've understood what it was all about. These pyramids are actually, or were actually, broadcasting a frequency, a signal to uh, uh, aliens, so that when they got in their spacecraft, no matter how far away, if they wanted to come to planet Earth, they could just type in that frequency and it would help them get to planet Earth. If they wanted to go to the moon or to Mars or to any other planet, there was, uh, no doubt still is, a pyramid, at least one pyramid there that was broadcasting a signal that would help them get to that point. OK, it's a means of navigating around the galaxy. That's what the pyramids are all about. OK, now, as they said, a lot of them have got damaged with the various cataclysmic events that have happened throughout time, all these earth shifts that have happened over time and so on, and many of them are no longer functioning, so aliens have to use other technology to navigate through space. But that's what the pyramids were for in the first place, navigation signal devices. OK? Thank you very much for listening to me. Please, any questions, ask, and I will do my best to help you. And uh, next time we'll talk about something else, OK? Thank you very much for listening to me, and I'll say goodbye, OK?